The ancient Greeks were known throughout the world for their philosophy, inventions, and scientific understanding not to mention their incredible armies that crushed their opponents in battle and their role as the forefathers of democracy. However, despite all their achievements at the time, they were known to commit utterly ridiculous acts, many of which are considered an abomination in today's societal standard, and some of which resulted in the demise of thousands of people in their time. Welcome to Crunch. In today's video, we'll learn about the strangest and most unbelievable actions that were considered normal in ancient Greece nasty diagnosis. Back in ancient times, Greek doctors used to diagnose human ailments by sticking a finger into the ears of the patient and then licking the earwax. Gross. But yeah, it happened. Imagine going to your doctor and he or she just sticks a finger into your ear, pulls out your earwax and slurps it right down. <laughs> This method of diagnosing a patient's ailment was first invented by the famous Hippocrates of Kos, the father of modern-day medicine. Hippocrates believed that the body had four humors – black bile, yellow bile, blood, and phlegm. These humors fitted into a sort of elemental Venn diagram of cold, hot, wet, and dry. A person would get sick if these humors were not properly balanced. Before Hippocrates came up with this method of treatment, the people of Greece used to associate illness with punishment from the gods. But Hippocrates firmly stood by his belief that the gods had nothing to do with why a person falls sick. The idea behind his famous earwax tasting was that a person with a bitter tasting earwax was perfectly healthy. But a person with a sweet tasting earwax was sick and needed medical attention. Humorism was very common in medicine until well into the mid 19th century which gave rise to many stories of bloodlettings, purgative vomits, and seemingly barbaric treatments dished out to peasants and princes alike. However, Hippocrates was a cautious, gentle doctor who vigorously demanded high ethical standards from his followers, which is why modern-day doctors honor his name by taking the Hippocratic Oath to do no harm. As if eating earwax was not enough, the people of ancient Greece did some things that took disgusting to a whole new level. Sweat Collecting We all adore our favorite celebrities and sports figures around the world. We idolize them so much that we organize concerts to see them perform, create fan clubs, and even have them sign autographs on our favorite shirt or book. The ancient Greeks, on the other hand, were not much different, except theirs was a little too personal. Doctors at the time believed that an athlete's bodily fluids had medicinal properties. So after every sports event, the sweat mixed with oil and dirt from an athlete would be scraped off their bodies by special people called gloios collectors. These collectors would then bottle the collected bodily fluid and sell it to doctors or anyone else who was interested. The specialized medicine was promoted as a natural remedy for all aches and pains. Simply put, rubbing gloios all over your body could give you some of the youthful vigor of the young men who produced it. While this may appear to be a ridiculous belief to us today, the ancient Greeks certainly believed it. In fact, sweat bottles were sold all over the ancient world, and markets near the best gymnasia did exceptionally well, particularly after public games. Population Control With all of the men being warriors and all of the women doing the housework in Sparta, it begs the question of how they met their farming and other basic labor needs. The Spartan solution was a servant population known as the Helots. This group of people were enslaved by the Spartans to work their farmlands, but they outnumbered the Spartans by ridiculous margins. As a result, the Spartans lived in constant fear of a revolt, a fear that was justified given the number of revolts that occurred back then. Every autumn, they would have their newest and youngest warriors train by engaging the toughest and bravest Helots the way a hunter does with its target. They did this in order to strike fear in the hearts of the Helots and make them less likely to rebel. However, the Helots were still successful in their revolt, demonstrating that no matter how tough you are, when your servants vastly outnumber you, you cannot control them forever. No toilet paper, no problem. Most people are familiar with ancient Rome's famed bathroom and plumbing systems, as well as the relatively advanced systems in cities such as ancient Athens. What would probably frighten people the most about the Greeks' bathroom hygiene habits was how they cleaned up afterwards. Of course, there was no toilet paper back then, so they had to make do with a sponge on a stick. 
After wiping their behinds, the stick was either left in a stream of running water or dumped in a bucket of water laced with salt and vinegar. The really gross part is that this stick was communal, meaning that in public bathrooms, you could be cleaning up with a sponge used by a lot of people. However, people sometimes got inventive and there wasn't always a single standard method. Ancient Greeks may have sometimes used small flattish stones to clean up after they were done. Weird Birth Control Even though the ancient Greeks were the forerunners of science, they had no idea how to prevent a woman from getting pregnant. There was a widespread belief that birth control was a woman's responsibility despite the fact that specific methods varied significantly. As a result, the men of Greece were spared some truly strange, not to mention revolting methods of contraception. The birth control method recommended by renowned Athenian gynecologist Soranus was the safest, albeit least effective. Even though he primarily operated in Rome, his ideas were widely adopted throughout the ancient world, including in his native country. So, what was his biggest advice? According to him, the only way to prevent the seed from being launched too far into the uterine cavity was if a woman held her breath and drew herself away from her partner. In addition, she would squat down as soon as possible, and then she should sneeze. Weird, right? Unibrows were beautiful. Today's standard of beauty would definitely reject what ancient Greek men perceived as beautiful. You see, back then, partially formed unibrows used to be the trend. Men wanted the women for which they had romantic feelings to have it. If you happen to grow a unibrow now, chances are you'd do virtually anything possible to get rid of it. But the opposite would be the case for women back then, as they were adored for having it. According to historians, Greek men were drawn to a blurred unibrow, a case in which the brows are only partially joined, to the point where you can notice the contrast up close, but not so well from a distance. Beauty is truly in the eye of the beholder. Goodbye Hygiene Contrary to popular belief, not every ancient city or village had a public bath, and even if they did, they weren't always open to the public. For a time, public baths were actually frowned upon in ancient Greek society, as they were considered far too decadent for a virile man to enjoy. Even when they were fashionable, the best you could hope for was scrubbing yourself with old, impure olive oil, or scraping the dirt off your body with a rough stick. Furthermore, while nearly everyone had access to a wash bowl, known as a luterion, those used by the lower classes were plain and unadorned in comparison to the elaborately decorated ones used by wealthier citizens. The lower classes, of course, would be expected to share wash bowls, but at the very least you dress nicely, right? Absolutely not. Clothing in ancient Greece was anything but pleasant. Of course, the wealthy and privileged lived a life of luxury in every way, including their wardrobes. Silks and linens were abundant. Ordinary Greeks, on the other hand, dressed entirely in wool. As you might expect, these became itchy, hot, and uncomfortable in the sun. Besides that, if the wool didn't itch you, the lice or other bugs living in your cloak or other clothes would. So, what do you think of the ancient Greeks? Would you have fit in with their way of doing things if you had suddenly gone back in time? Tell us about it in the comments section below. As always, thanks for watching Crunch History. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.